Thank you, Becky. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at Lord of Life. Whether you're joining us in person or on Facebook Live, we're glad you're here. I just have a couple of announcements. My name is Pastor Beth Walsh, I'm serving as pastor here at Lord of Life. Uh, next week, we will have two services. We'll go back to our usual schedule, 8.30 a.m. will be live streamed, and of course, that remains on our Facebook page after um, our worship is completed. And we'll also have an in-person service at 11 o'clock beginning next Sunday. Um, next Sunday at 11, we will receive new members. We have several families who are joining us as members, uh, familiar faces, but now they'll be uh, part of our um, community officially. And we will be meeting on Monday night at 7 o'clock. So if you or someone you know is interested in membership, uh, we'll be meeting on Zoom tomorrow night at 7. And uh, you can contact the church office tomorrow, and Jessica will send you all the information. Uh, tomorrow evening, also, a grief support group begins. Uh, Sanford Hospital is hosting it. It's at the UND uh, Family Medical Building. So if that's something you're interested in um, and need uh, some support through a grief, a time of grief, um, please join them. Um, the information is in the bulletin as to where and when and how to contact them. Uh, finally, um, we're still looking for candy, uh, Easter egg candy. So that uh, we will have a citywide Easter egg hunt with several other churches in the, in the area. So if you are able to donate a bag of Easter candy, please uh, just drop it off in the church. Um, and if maybe you haven't seen it yet, but there's a little food pantry out by our driveway now built by um, a scout named Isaiah. And he uh, did that as his Eagle Scout project. So if you know someone who needs food from a little food pantry, you can direct them our way, or you can make contributions uh, to fill that pantry at any time. Let's stand and begin our worship with the words of confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God, who is faithful and just, and who has promised to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment now for silent confession. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Let's sing our opening song, number 808, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. together the prayer of the day. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you make an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so that the glory in the cross of Christ, that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. The first reading is taken from Genesis, the 17th chapter. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a, multiple, a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you, 
throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 4. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs, be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, and is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into the existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according what, to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the bareness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith, and he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned, into him, reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him and who raise, and who raise Jesus, from the, Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Children, will you join me for a message? And kids online, you'll want to get up close and see what I have in my bag. Hello, girls. How are you? Good to see you. So I'm going to tell you a story about um, Jesus. And Jesus taught his disciples. We remember what disciples means, right? It means followers followers of Christ, someone who learns. And Jesus tells them to take up their cross and follow him. So does that mean like we take a cross like I have here and we put it on and that's, that's our cross and we're just going to carry it around and follow Jesus? It might. Some of us are called to wear a cross and use that as our life and our way of living. But there's other ways we can take up our cross, especially when you're little. There's other ways. There are ways that you can be helpful. What do I have here? What is that stuff? Yeah, washing soap and a rag. So I could help. I could be a servant to take up my cross and help somebody else by washing dishes or cleaning something, maybe helping mom or dad or your grandparents, even before they ask, wouldn't that be great? Or what is about this? What could I do with, yeah, it's a cleaning rag. I could dust things that are dusty. I could wipe off the dust with a cleaning rag. Maybe my bookshelf or my toy racks. And clean a little bit, help somebody else, keeping things clean. I could, what's this? A storybook. If I'm a reader or I'm a little bit older, I could read a story to somebody who's younger or tell them about the pictures I see. I could tell somebody a story. I could sit with a friend and look at a book together. Or what's this? It's a big number one finger, yay! I could go to a friend's game or cheer them on or if they do something great, I could say, way to go, good job, and cheer for them. I could just say I could clap for them, couldn't I? 
Those are ways that I can serve my friends, serve, and that serves God. Do you like that? You do, don't you? That's pretty fun. So we love God, and we take up our cross and follow God when we help other people and love them. Should we pray about that? Let's do that. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Help us to take up our cross and follow you. Amen. Thanks, girls. You can go have a seat back at your chair. The congregation can stand, and we will continue with the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then he, Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said this all quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd and his, with his disciples and said to them, If you want to become my followers, if any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in, re in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes into the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Thanks be to God. The congregation may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When my boys were little, I'm sorry kids, the older two would go off to school or birthday parties or simply to climb trees in the yard, and my youngest son, Jack, would always say, what about me? Often from his high chair, what about me? He was always worried about being left behind or not getting to do something special like his brothers. FOMO, we say now, fear of missing out. I think many of us have that sense now and again. We just want to be noticed. We want to be included. In our reading from Genesis today, God gives Abraham a blessing, a covenant. God has already promised once to Abraham that he would be the father of many descendants and would give him the land of Canaan. And it's at this point in that narrative that started way back at chapter 15 and continues to 21 that Abram is given a new name. He's now called Abraham. And Sarai is not to be left out. She is given a new name too. She's now called Sarah. I noticed in this reading this time around, Sarah. God gives Sarai a covenant of her own. She's included in Abraham's promise as he is the father of many nations, but of course there must be a mother too. She had been barren, but now she would also have a legacy. Sarah and Abraham were to receive this promise together. God gives Sarai a covenant of her own. And they're elderly now and still have no children of their own. In Sarah's opinion, God was taking just too long, or perhaps God had forgotten God's promise. So Sarai hatched a plan for Abraham to father a child with her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and Hagar was to give birth to a child for them. But this wasn't Sarai's child, it was Hagar's. 
And this was not what God had promised. So here we are again with God visiting to remind them of God's promise, God's covenant. And then God spoke of Sarai too. She would no longer be Sarai, but Sarah. She would be included in the promise. She would not be left out. Abraham's gift of many nations would come from Sarah. She would be the mother. This promise, this covenant was both Abraham and Sarah's, and God has a covenant for us too, where none of us are left out. Each week when we celebrate Holy Communion, we hear Jesus' words, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. No one is left out of God's good gifts. There is a place for each of us and no one needs to say, what about me? The gift of grace and salvation is for all of us, each one of us. Our mission statement here at Lord of Life reads, we welcome all so each person may know God's grace in Christ. When we extend a hand of welcome to others, when we invite them into our community, we are extending God's love. When we take up our cross and serve others, serve God by serving others, we remember to live into the covenant that is for all people. And no one needs say, what about me? Friday night into Saturday morning, the ninth grade confirmation students spent time with Reed and me in retreat. We talked about God's gift of grace and salvation. How this gift frees us from sin and death and frees us for service to our neighbor. This retreat helps our kids prepare for their affirmation of faith. But more importantly, it reminds each of us of God's commitment to us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We talked together about vocation how whatever we do, we can do for God. That intersection of what brings us joy and what serves others is our vocation. The covenant from God is about being part of something, being a family, and not feeling left out. The covenant is not about color or occupation or wealth or the lack of it, race, ethnicity, or heritage. The covenant is simply to be part of a community that loves, simply loves one another, and loves those we haven't even met yet. We love others, and we welcome the neighbor in response to God's love for us. God keeps God's promises, even if it takes longer than we think. And so we love our neighbor while we wait. Luther taught, and I shared this with the ninth graders, that God does not need our good works, but our neighbors do. There is no way that Abraham and Sarah could repay God for God's love and grace. God's promise of a new land and descendants greater than the stars in the sky because they were all a gift. And Jesus' life, death, and resurrection is all a gift too. Our calling, our vocation is to share that good news with those who have never heard it, or for those who have heard it but struggle to believe. Our actions, our lives, just like the faithfulness of Abraham and Sarah, can show the world around us that God's love and forgiveness is for them too. What about me? Is there room for me? Does God love me? Yes. Yes, yes, God's promise is for all of God's children. No one is excluded from that promise. And that is indeed good news, and for that we all can say, thanks be to God. Our worship continues with the singing of <laughs> our Father we have wandered.
Let us confess our faith with Christians throughout the world using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for the whole human family, and for all creation. Heavenly Father, through your covenant with Abraham and Sarah, you blessed all nations. Grant to all people the blessings of peace, freedom, and righteousness, which apart from you cannot flourish. Direct and guide our nation, that our words and deeds may please and glorify you, the Lord of the whole planet. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, teach the people of this congregation to follow Jesus in humble service and cross-bearing. Let our worship, words, and lives glorify you and strengthen the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, your Son did not shrink from suffering and death. Grant grace to all who are protect. Pro, pro, ah, let me start that again. Grant grace to all who are persecuted for Jesus' sake, so that the glory, so that they glory in His cross and rejoice in His resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we thank you for all who have put the needs of others before their own during this time of pandemic and economic hardship. We ask that you be with them and indeed with all of us as the struggle continues. May this time of isolation and sacrifice for so many soon end, that we may soon enjoy the company of family, neighbors, and friends. Lord, in your mercy. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. We especially pray today for all those on our prayer list and those spoken aloud here or held in our hearts. We ask that you give comfort to Anne Sletmo on the passing of her brother and to the Gooden family on the passing of Pat's brother. Lord, in your mercy. hands gather all our prayers in your wide embrace most gracious god through your son jesus christ amen the congregation may be seated at this time we take a few moments to remember the gifts that god has first given us um, we have a, a uh, offering plate in the back that you can contribute to on your way out if you'd like or if you are online please join us um, on our website or mail a contribution to our church to support the ministries here at lord of life listen to some music. Please stand and let's sing.
Let us pray. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation. Through Jesus Christ, amen. and presence which you have sustained the faithful in this and every generation. Above all, we give thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and ascension, we pray for his coming again. Let us pray together for uh, that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. This is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Take and eat.
as you are able. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Thanks, O God, for the blessings of this table. May our lives be made new by these gifts of grace, and may our love be made known through us. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look on us with favor and give us peace. closing song is Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus.
Lord, peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks.